So, all right, because what, even those here to understand how this operates, how straightforward it is. Now, the Shema is the part that we're touching on, and this is the, the part two of the of the um, UCC uh, overview, the instructional concerning the Rastafari Church, the Beta Rastafari and our Universal Church of Code, uh, standing bylaws, official order of business. So we first address the basic order of business and the basic unit, the basic ideal three-man unit. The a threefold court is not um, quickly broken as we have in Ecclesiastes, the chair, the co-chair, and the secretary. We square it with a treasurer, but we begin off with this with this trinity. All right, now, we discussed that in the first part, and here we're at section six. So we left off with, or we last uh, previously dealt with um, the oath of a, of a unit, you understand? And the unit can be two, you understand, like a, havru, a havrim or havruta, you understand, um, whether two sisters or two brothers, you understand, that can be a unit, a basic two-man unit, you understand, but the unit now, as far as an executionable unit or executive unit, is at least three, you understand, but... Um, as as it moves forward, the the treasurer comes into it. But there's an important note on the treasurer and the squaring um, of 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 that of that um, position with with the with the foundation because very important. Um, Iscariot gave that a bad name because money's involved, and you know Judas is carrying, and people think about treasure. People don't think about it consciously, but so somebody say you be the treasure and do something in the Bible way. People no doubt think about it's carrying, and that's not saying there's anything wrong with the treasurer position. There's been many good treasurers, but there's of course a temptation because there's money. All right, so that's why we leave that for another, another teaching and another counseling and another sermon and on. So now here we're in. Um, we turn to Romans. Cause we want to deal with Romans ten ten. We left off at um, section six, right, which is the admission of new members or dekamesmor, a disciple or newcomer, adis met, and begins by the saying of the Shema, the Sima, right. Uh, and that's from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 to 5, coupled with Acts chapter 8, verse 3 and 7. To be said with the left arm upraised, index finger extended, um, forming the Tuwahedo um, Ahadu. You understand the Tuwahedo or the Gu'ez Ahaz, the, the digital, you understand, the one. And then laying hold of the Holy Bible, the Metaf Kedus, with the right hand. King James Version of the Bible may be used, but the Rab, the Revised and Hard Bible of of Nagus and Neges is prefer, preferred. So we went to the second paragraph in in um, section six, which says first the officiating officer or member shall begin the opening of the mouth. Now we want to describe what this opening of the mouth is, but let's first begin off with Romans chapter ten. Romans chapter ten deals with the apparent failure of the promises of to Israel is explained by their lack of faith. That's why the faith leads to the trust. And this is why we don't have more things going on, not because our brothers and sisters are not talented. Some are multi-talented geniuses. But more, more times, one have to work alone, or the trust factor, or money comes in, the, you know, because we have to, it's our divine heritage, it's the faith base. Without the foundation, there's no groundation. We have to build upon his word. You overstand upon the rock. So, brethren, beginning chapter 10, the key verse on the opening of the mouth is Romans 10.10. 10. Make a note of that. Romans 10.10. 10. In fact, let us make a note of that. We're going to probably update this again, right, with a couple of uh, footnotes right here, um, just further um, clarifying certain matters that we have, um, right, that we have uh, uh, said Okay, full name here. I'm just making a note of that on our copy right here. So we're tagging it up so we can upgrade, update that. Right, so brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God, to Abba for Israel, is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Abba. They have a zeal of God, of Jah, 
Rastafari, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant, that means not knowing, of God's righteousness, of what the King of Kings' true righteousness is. It's not about how long your locks are, how much ital you eat, how much ice gold green you wear, or Ethiopian clothing you wear. All these things are important. They have their role. But that has nothing to do with God's righteousness. His Majesty's righteousness, Abba's righteousness, is our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. Getachi. That's our righteousness. He is our righteousness. And going about to establish their own righteousness based upon Aital or, you know, based upon reggae music or roots or even bingi or, or chanting or any of these things. You know what I'm saying? That's not our righteousness, right? They have not submitted, submitted themselves to the righteousness of Ha Elohim, Baruch Hu, blessed be He. They have not submitted to the righteousness of Keramawi, Haila Shalase. All right? They have not submitted to that righteousness, his righteousness, the good news of him. For Christos, for Christ, Moshiach, is the end of the law. Now, make a note on end of the law in your Bibles, Romans chapter 10, verse 4. If you look that up, that would actually be fitame, the fulfillment. Not the end to say, well, the law is over. That's how a lot of ones who were ignorant read it and misunderstood it. It means the fulfillment. You understand? The, the fullness, the fulfillment. For Christos is the fulfillment of the law, Torah, for righteousness, for right standingness. You understand? For tzidik, tzidiknet, right? To everyone that King James says, believe if we say ma menef, that have true and faithful witness, the object. The object of our faith, is the, the, the faith object is Yeshua. Amen be Yeshua's name. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. That's the golden mean of faith, right? Verse 5, it says, For Moses, Musa, he describes the righteousness which is of the law, which is of the hig, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them who do with those things. So the law is not done away with, it's fulfilled in the Moshiach. It's fulfilled in the spirit and in the truth of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 6, it says, But the righteousness which is of faith, right, of the imnet, of the amen, it speaketh on this wise. Here's how the righteousness which is the amen. Here's how the, that righteousness which is of faith it speaks. Say not in thy heart. Don't say in your heart. Who shall ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christos Moshiach down from above. Or, who shall descend into the deep? That is, to bring up Christos Moshiach again from the dead. But, verse 8, but, say, but what saith it? What does it say? Here's what the Spirit, here's what the righteousness that is of faith, here's what it speaks. Here's the true voice. The word is nigh. It's near. Karb. Right? Karb, right? It's near thee. Even in thy mouth. This is the true opening of the mouth. The Shema is the true opening of the mouth. The word, right, the logos word, right, is near thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart and in thy conscious. So when we say people are conscious, are we speaking of real, con of real consciousness according to the righteousness of the king of kings? If so, this is the word. The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart. That is the word of faith, the word of imnet, right? The word, the imnet subjectively, we have imnet on the amen. And when our, our imnet, which is the bride of Christ, meets the amen, you know what I'm saying? That's like the marriage of the Lamb. This is the word of faith which we preach, which we proclaim. Verse 9 that if, 
thou, if you, right, if the I shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus or Bamarinya Gita Jesus or the Ebraista Kwankwa in the Hebrew Adonai Yeshua Yehoshua and shall my men exercise true and faithful witness in thine heart, in your conscience, your consciousness, your in your consciousness that God Ha Elohim hath raised him up from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Then you can truly say Dehna in a Dehna name. You know and then you truly are dehna, denna, right? But from, in, from the, the 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 saving of medane, medhane alem. Now here's ten ten. Here's ten ten wins. For with the heart, man believeth, mameneth, right? Exercises true and faithful witness to righteousness with your conscience. You exercise true and faithful witness. To righteousness, which is Christos, that's why the law is our schoolmaster, Torah, and with the mouth, right, with the mouth, confession is made to salvation. So if we don't confess it, you're, you're focusing that connection. We have to speak that word. You understand? Know it's important in speaking that word. The devil, what is it, the cat got your tongue, really, it's like the serpent got one's tongue that they know this, but they feel afraid to confess it. They feel afraid to speak that rhema word, the rhema word, the right now word, you know what I'm saying, which is your mouth now making confession or profession and expression to salvation. Right, to Madan, right, to salvation. Right, now, this is very, very important right there. That's what we wanted to just point out concerning the opening of the mouth from Romans 10.10, 10, which, is, which is here in our UCC, um, section 6, where first the officiating officer, the, the member, you understand, it could be the chairperson, the co-chair, it could even be the secretary. But there are witnesses, two or three witnesses to justify every word, right? Shall begin the opening of the mouth by saying the five words, by saying these five words. Now, Juario Paulos, he says in 1 Corinthians 14 and 19, let's get these five words, right, from 1 Corinthians, right, 14 and 14 and, and, and 19, right? 14 and 19. And it says here, he says, uh, Yet in the church, the Mahibar, uh, uh, right? The society, the church, I think this is where it does say Mahibar, right? Let's bring this up right here. Um, but in the, yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my overstanding. These are the, your first five um, Ethiopic words that by my voice right you get that my voice word sound power by my voice I might teach others also that I might teach others also right there's a note you know sometimes the Holy Spirit is revealing something so so wonderful that even I have to say you know, I say, I remind y'all to take it down because I'm like, I want to take it down, but I want to keep speaking it too. But sometimes I have to just say, all right, let me uh, take this, you know, take this down as well. You know what I'm saying? Let me make a note of this, a note to self, right? Um, the five words, right? These five words. What are these five words? You know, for a while I remember reading this and, you know, was thinking that, well, maybe it was just, um, you know, maybe it was just like any five words. Uh, you know, these are saying five words. But then I said, wait, as I study Hawaii up Alos, I say these five words must really, and, and, I, and, I, and not just any five words. They can't be any five words. You understand? Because Hawaii up Alos, Paul, 
is a he's a Gnostic, a real Gnostic, not a pseudo, uh, not a Gnosis, a pseudonymous. He's not dealing with science falsely so-called. He's a real.